Why would one say that Jesus alone is sinless when supposedly all of the prophets are sinless? Well, what does the Quran say about that? We know for sure that it is taught that Jesus is the one who is Salih, who is the righteous one, that he is Zaki, that is sinless. And the hadith attests to this as well. Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his khutbah, as we said time and again, has referred to the fact that he is the only one who was not touched by Satan's two fingers. So he was preserved. We know this is true of him. But is it only uniquely of him? And we assert that yes, it is only uniquely of him. Why? The testimony of the Quran, the testimony of the Torah, and the Zabur and the Injil, all of them do speak about the problems and the sins of the prophets who came before. For example, we know from the testimony of the Quran in, in Surah Shu'ara, uh, Ayah 82, it tells us of Abraham's sin and he is exhorted to ask forgiveness for his sin. We know also about Nabi Musa and how he hit someone and he slew him, he killed him, and he himself confessed, what I have done is the work of shaitan. I have committed a grave sin. And he pleaded with Allah to forgive him his sin. And so we learn also about uh, Jonah. In uh, uh, Surah Safat, uh, Ayah 139, all the way to 148, you read the story. It clearly says that Allah allowed a whale, a big fish, to swallow him because he had sinned. He refused to obey the will of Allah. And we are told also about Muhammad, peace be upon him. In Surah Muhammad, Ayah 19, implore Allah for your sins. And it is put in the plural, not a sin, not an error. It calls it what it is. A sin. And again, in uh, Surah Fat, uh, Ayah 1 and 2, Allah says, I have given you a gift, a victory, that your sins past and future sins, even not just his present sins, past and future sins would be forgiven to you. So the testimony of the Quran is clear. And the testimony of the Quran is clear not just about these prophets, but also about Isa al-Masih, that he alone is called Zaki. Not one passage in all of the revelations that have come, not in the Injil, not in the Quran that is uh, testifying very clearly, and not even in the Hadith as a commentary to the Quran, is there one single charge against Isa al-Masih that he had either a peccadilla and little error or a great sin, none at all. Hadrat Isa al-Masih himself has said to his accusers, who among you can convict me of sin? He truly was the only one who was sinless. Now, what is the point of all of this? Rather than be distraught at the fact that the prophets confessed that they are sinners, that they have sinned, rather than be distraught by this as much as you and I want to honor the prophets and we should we need to see that their confession and their plea with Allah to be forgiven is a model of repentance for us